Um, so next, the next speaker that we're going to have is um, Marie Lausch. Marie is the president of UE Local 222, the United Electrical Radio and Machine Workers of America. It is a local comprised of over 2,000 municipal and board of ed members here in Connecticut, as well as a member, she's also as well a member of the UE National Executive Board. Um, Marie has been an activist for women's rights and the peace movement for over 40 years. She was a former um, board member of Connecticut United for Peace, and spoke in Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 2010 at the World Peace Conference. Um, Marie currently resides in Ibrahim and is a wife, mother, grandmother, and is active in her community. Um, thank you, Marie. Good evening. I'm a little taller and a little older, so hopefully you can hear me. My name is Marie Lausch. I'm the president uh, of Local 222 of United Electrical Machine Radio and Machine Workers of America. We call it UE for short. Uh, we represent thousands of municipal and board of education workers in the state of Connecticut, and I'm on the national executive board. We have private and uh, public sector uh, members in our union. I work as a 911 dispatcher in New Britain. I'm honored to sit with my sisters on this panel to discuss with you an insidious movement that's taking place in our country. It's called the War on Women. My union has a proud reputation as a rank and file member run organization recently named by the magazine The Nation as America's most valuable union. The UE started in the 30s in Westinghouse and GE electrical manufacturing plants. At that time, single women only were hired and they were released when they got married. And uh, they made lower wages than the men. They had no health care or pensions. By the 40s, UE had hired 13 female field organizers, and it held a conference on women's wages. We were red-baited during the McCarthy era, but our strong women had the audacity to file discrimination charges against GE with the National War Labor Board for equal pay for equal work and we won. Perhaps some of you have uh, seen this poster. Anybody know who this is? No, it's not Rosie. It's Westinghouse Wendy. And she was uh, characterized our women in the Westinghouse plants as we took over the positions and fought for equal pay for women in the workplace. And I lost my place here. <laughs> um, remember that this was the June Cleaver days when the little women were supposed to demurely take care of the home and family while the man made the living. But times were changing. The women's movement progressed in the UE. A 1951 song featured the following words on a popular radio program. Jack and Jill worked in the mill and their skills were on a par. Sad to say, not so their pay for Jill earned less by far. In 1953, we held our first national conference on the problems of working women, and in the 1970s, our UE brothers joined us in two giant strikes to win pay parity for women. Unheard of for men to do this at the time. By 1985, Amy Newell was elected as Secretary Treasurer, the first woman ever to hold top office in the United States Manufacturing Trade Union. We've come a long way, and yet we still have a long way to go. Madeleine Albright once said, there's a special place in hell for women that don't help other women. In Connecticut, the UE has worked with the Permanent Commission on the Status of Women and many health care and community organizations to ensure equal rights for our sisters. The methods of management are subtler these days channeling workers into primarily male or primarily female jobs, which still happens, with the pay scales varying widely. Why does a custodian that sweeps the school earn significantly more than the paraeducator female who works one-on-one -on -one with the children? When we fought for health care, our paraeducators in Wallingford School District, uh, the uh, then Machiavellian superintendent, He's not there anymore. 
told our members that they should sit down and be quiet and be glad they had a job. Insurance? They should just go on their husband's insurance. Well, he left a meeting with most of his body parts intact. UE222 staged massive rally, spoke at council meetings, reached out to the public, and held our own health care forum. There we heard heartbreaking stories such as the tale of one of our parents who did have her husband's lousy insurance and was being treated successfully for breast cancer until that insurance reached the financial limit and the treatment stopped. She was a mom with two young kids and her choices were to have a double mastectomy, which the insurance would fund, or stop all treatment. Guess what she did? I'm thrilled to see so many strong, independent women here tonight. This is not always the case in the workplace where threats, veiled or otherwise, of job loss, particularly during these tough economic times, make many low-paid workers timid. Lois Wise once said, men are taught to apologize for their weaknesses. Women are taught to apologize for their strengths. Our local is actively seeking to empower our members and build leadership skills. I know I'm preaching to the choir tonight when I reiterate the astounding list of anti-woman, anti-choice legislation. Despite the fact that the Wall Street Journal poll ranked the issues in order of importance to Americans of jobs at 48 percent, government spending 16 percent, health care 11 percent, and other issues listed as war, national security, energy and gas costs, and immigration, our Republican-led House has made it their mission to pass a staggering amount of legislation that negatively impacts females. In historically unprecedented attacks on working and or low paid, low income women, the House has pursued the following. In January, HR 2 was proposed a bill to repeal health care. In February, a bill was proposed to defund Planned Parenthood, an agency that many women count on for their health screenings, mammograms, and other services, and to eliminate federal funding for family planning counseling. In April, the Republicans threatened to shut down the whole U.S. government if their anti-choice bill was not passed. In May, there was a proposal to cut funding to any medical school that teaches abortion techniques. In June, there was an anti-abortion language tacked onto an agricultural bill. What the hell is an agricultural <laughs> bill doing with abortion language? As you know, tragically, H.R. 3, the anti-abortion funding bill, passed in the House. I've got a list here. I won't bore you with the whole thing. with some subcommittees and some of the bills. I, I have the information. If you need it, you can look it up online. The Subcommittee on the Constitution and House of Representatives is trying to pass H.R. 212, the Sanctity of Human Life Act, and H.R. 1096, the Sanctity of Life Act of 2011. The House Committee on the Judiciary is trying to pass H.R. 374, Life at Conception Act. The Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism, and Homeland Security. We need that yeah. terrorism. The, you know, these women we have here, we're kind of a scary group. Uh, tried to pass H.R. 2299 called the Child Interstate Abortion Notification Act. The Subcommittee on Health had three of them. 217, which is Title X Abortion Provider Prohibition Act. 593, which is Taxpayer Conscience Protection Act of 2011. 1099 is Taxpayers' Freedom of Conscience Act. House Committee on Energy and Commerce. What does that have to do with somebody's reproductive rights? But they tried to pass 3013, the Heartbeat Informed Consent Act. Energy and the Commerce Commission it has an ongoing investigation of Planned Parenthood. These are just some of the attacks that people don't even realize are going on in the United States of America today. The battle goes on. Interestingly enough, there are zero bills proposed regarding procreation issues for men. There are no plans to outlaw vasectomies or to jail those doctors who perform them. No current legislation exists to ban condoms or any other male contraceptives. 
There is no plan to require DNA testing for all males to enforce paternal financial contributions. This war on women is a vicious and multifaceted attack. Ironically, right-wing legislators seek not only to stop all abortions, even those in case of rape or incest, but they also want to cut child care funding and other family support services. You can have lots of kids. We're not going to do anything with them. We want you to have them. That's right. Bills are being proposed to label abortion providers as murderers and rape victims as accusers. Let's bring a 12-year-old up on the stand who's been raped by three or four grown men and label her an accuser. Can the labeling of a woman as a murderer also be far behind? Bring on the burkas and the stonings. It is my opinion that each woman, ha woman has to make her own choices based on her personal criteria, whether they are social, moral, or religious beliefs. I would say to our legislators, and I have, tend to the business of running our country and get your legislation out of my uterus. My union encourages all members to get politically involved, not with any particular political party, but with a candidate that espouses what is right for workers. We encourage our members to do their own lobbying and to run for political office themselves. Currently, there are UE members in their rep respective state legislators. Did you know that the United States ranks 70th in the world in the number of women that hold national office? 70th in the world. Joan Kirner, who was a renowned Australian politician, once said, there is no such thing as being non-political. Just by making a decision to stay out of politics, you are making the decision to allow others to shape politics and exert power over you. What's my place again, these bifocals here. And if you are alienated from the current political system, then just by staying out of it, if you do nothing to change it, you simply entrench it. I encourage all young women to consider getting involved, to be the change we so desperately need. We women of the UE are not standing idly by on women's issues. Some of our biggest battles in Connecticut are on health care, pensions, and pay parity. Our resolutions, and I do have copies of resolutions that we just passed at our national convention, 